progressive era put its faith in expertise to solve problems, not charming politicians. The experts of the time worked to solve many social ills, women's suffrage, unsafe labor conditions, corruption in politics, and the growing power of corporations. While America worked on problems within, the world was at war. After trying to stay neutral, in 1917, German threats pulled the U.S. into World War I. World War I ended a year and a half later and started one of the most dramatic growth periods in American history, the Roaring Twenties. Radios, cars, soaring stock prices and ownership, amazing new technology. Life was great for many people in the 20s. Large engineering teams worked on even larger projects within massive corporations. During the 20s, corporations and government employed three quarters of America's engineers. Engineers typically worked to promote profits and there was little concern for the social good. A new trend emerged in engineering as well, the move from purely technical roles to management. Corporate loyalty and success working in bureaucracies helped to establish a common practice of moving senior engineers into management positions throughout the industry. The Roaring Twenties came to a crashing halt in 1929 on Black Tuesday when the stock market started a massive downward slide at most 80% of its value. This is what started the Great Depression. Unemployment was rampant, as high as 25% in 1933. President Herbert Hoover, an engineer by trade, tried unsuccessfully to cure economic problems. The technocracy movement saw a, um, a revival at this time trying to create a better way to govern by leveraging the scientific method and engineering practices in politics. Blamed for the Great Depression, Hoover was defeated in a historical landslide election by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Roosevelt's New Deal threw the proverbial kitchen sink at the problem, but it was not until World War II that America's economy recovered. After World War II, America took an unprecedented step. We didn't demobilize our military or stop research and development spending. America was about to enter a new kind of war, the Cold War. The Soviet Union was an American ally in World War II, but even before the end of the war, the alliance was uneasy. The Soviets made it clear that they intended to maintain control of the territories they freed from Germany occupancy, a practice the United States didn't approve of. After the war was over, America chose not to demobilize our military, and instead to support development of new weapons at an astonishing rate. This period became to be known as the Cold War, where the battles were fought, with scientists in research and development labs instead of with soldiers in the field. The arms race continued to grow out of control and nuclear prol proliferation in both the USSR and the USA created a stockpile of tens of thousands of warheads in a few short years. It wasn't long before there were so many weapons that there was mutually assured destruction if nuclear war were to be started. From weapons to support systems, Military spending seemed limitless during the Cold War. Technologies, technologies that developed at a rapid pace during World War II, like airplanes, rockets, and the atomic bomb, saw even more advances as military ties to industry and ac academia increased. In the councils of government, we must car guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. I'm here at Boeing, one of many companies that make up the military-industrial-academic complex. In President Eisenhower's 1961 farewell address, he warned that defense spending and industry involvement were creating a military-industrial complex. The sheer size of the projects being tackled required not only significant government spending, but also the expertise of numerous companies and universities. So much work was being dedicated to military projects that by 1960 nearly half of all engineers were working for the government either directly or indirectly. This tremendous amount of work and collaboration gave rise to many breakthroughs that have helped to shape modern world through computers, satellites, and even the way we communicate with the invention of the internet. The Cold War even went beyond planet Earth as the space race between America and the Soviet Union saw each country fight for technical supremacy as manned spaceflight became a reality. From communication and spy satellites to putting a man on the moon, mastery of space had become a measure of national superiority. Although these innovations were significant, the military-industrial academic complex introduced several ethical dilemmas as well. For every dollar that was spent on a weapon or defense system, 
there was one fewer dollars to spend on projects that would directly serve society. The cost of lost opportunities is difficult to quantify, but begs the question, where would we be if we put forth as much effort into solving issues of health care, poverty, education, or inequality? Beyond these, there were other ethical debates. Were universities abandoning their mission by working on secret projects that weren't publicly available? Would the amount of defense spending cause companies to lobby for more wars? The military-industrial-academic complex also had impact on American workers. Skilled jobs that offered employee autonomy were being increasingly converted into unskilled positions that relied on military command and control processes. By the end of the Cold War, America had emerged as the sole global superpower. Bolstered by military spending, America had become a high-tech, high-consumption society. America's vibrant industrial economy had created considerable benefits for many engineers and consumers. However, it was also consuming planetary resources at an alarming rate. The mass industrialization of our consumer-driven society had pushed the planetary boundaries past their limits. Engineers have worked hard to improve lives through innovation, yet historically speaking, there has been little concern for the environment. From thick smokestack pollution starting in the late 19th century to the more recent problems of acid rain, technical advancements have brought, them, brought with them many negative effects that disproportionately impact less developed countries. The situation is not hopeless. Corporations and engineers have begun to become more aware of the importance of sustainability and running businesses in an environmentally friendly way. In conjunction with the government regulations, we are already seeing some improvements in many industries, ranging from appliance efficiency to vehicle emissions. Current regulations and a basic awareness of the problem, however, is insufficient to make the major course corrections necessary. ASU President Dr. Crow states that our political and economic systems are too once limited and too, and too simplistic, which becomes obvious when reviewing the difficulty of changing the current system. Engineers today are left facing a difficult decision. How responsible are they for designing sustainable solutions? With this corporations motivated by short-term profits, are engineers expected to simply do as they are told, or, mu or must they adhere to a higher social responsibility and provide only ethical, sustainable solutions? Some believe that a minim minimalist approach is sufficient, and engineers merely need to avoid actively doing harm or breaking the law. Others feel that a more active solution is necessary and that reasonable care must be taken where all engineers seek sustainable solutions as part of the design process. It may even be necessary to take drastic steps, asking each engineer to take personal responsibility for good works, refusing projects unless they actively work to improve sustainability. With the common practice of engineers moving into management, these decisions will have to be profound impact on, pu on future generations worldwide. From all of us at Team 1C, thank you for watching. We wish you well in your future studies and in your pursuit of a meaningful career. Good luck and Godspeed.